and the older we get the more i think rowing is more about not disturbing the boat not so much about propelling it and pulling it and pushing it that's all true but we all know that story but i think the most underrated issue is how much do you disturb the boat flow or not and this exercise teaches you not to disturb the boat not to destroy the work you've done the drive before but to keep the boat speed alive keeping the boat speed alive is the most important thing and probably this is what i'm going to call this video yeah how to keep boat speed alive Yes, hello and welcome everybody to another technique drill. This time it's something quite special. It's something I started to use when I was a teenager and started to do race preparation a bit my own way. What do you do when you want to do a race preparation without doing actually a race load for the body? So you don't want to get wasted, you don't want to get tired, but you still want to practice the technique you need during race pace. And this is exactly the exercise. Looks weird, looks a bit awkward, and this is exactly why it is so helpful. This is how you do it. This is Alex. Um, you see, super slow, no power at all during the drive. You take it actually super easy. So you do everything you're taught and reverse it. It looks super goofy. What you do now is you, you storm forward and then you have a no power drive. And then you rush forward and a no power drive. And you may ask yourself, what is this arm talking about today? Is that silly? I mean, we were supposed to row a different way. Yes. But what if you knew that preparation is the key to a solid drive. And what if you knew that preparation always, always, excuse the word, sucks during race pace when you become tired? And this is true with 99.99% of all athletes. The more tired you become, the less your preparation is gonna work. And the preparation is key to a solid drive. And this is exactly what we're doing now. You give yourself super, super, super little time to prepare well. And on top of that, you do a drive without any power. So you storm forward and you have a drive with zero power and the objective is to still let the boat float uninterruptedly. Look at Alex bow. See this? There is no stopping. Storm forward. How is that possible? A lot of practice. A lot of practice. What are the things you need to be careful about? Same procedure as every year. To quote one, I, you, you girls and guys in, in, in the US and in UK actually might not know that. But every, every January 1st, at least in Austria and Germany, it's something super typical. It's called dinner for one. By the way, the same procedure as last year, Miss <laughs> Sophie. The same procedure as every year, James. The same procedure as every year, James. Yes. <laughs> What you do on the way forward counts and you got to do all the things super correctly that you usually don't even pay attention to when you are in race pace because now you don't have the race pace load you're not super tired and you're still going to get everything right we practiced this um last saturday in one of the live indoor rowing sessions uh, we have every week by the way if you want to join armtraining.com sign up super fun very helpful all right now alex now has to get everything right which means the load on the hands must not be too much let's check yeah that's key he still is a bit too deep see this he doesn't have randall foils if you had randall foils super easy supports you to give you feedback sit in nice and softly let's go he doesn't this is why he gets the blades too deep does he do this exercise well okay absolutely but not perfectly in a perfect world his blade would not be any deeper than it would naturally be if it floated uh, there was a question by the way uh, shouldn't the blade seat shouldn't the blade sit deeper um, let me answer that again no um, the optimum blade depth in my humble opinion and experience is just just an idea below the water surface and this is exactly where it floats naturally the thing is there are two reasons for that reason number one uh, if you go if you dig too deep you waste a lot of time during the drive getting the blade very deep in and then you have to get it back out which means the boat's gonna bump a lot and uh, the second thing is if you go so deep you have a lot of drag on the shaft and you don't want to do that that's just my experience so if we follow along what Alex is doing at this point of time now he needs to prepare very very elegantly and quickly 
The boat is slow and he's storming forward, so he's out of proportion, out of relation. The ratio is not right anymore. And the objective is to make sure that the boat doesn't stop. Let's play this again. Just watch Alex Bow. From first stroke on, he has a light stop. And now watch the second one. No stop at all. How does he do that? He distributes the body weight in the most in the most perfect way. Which means on the way forward, although he's storming forward, everything is a shortcut mode, so there is not much time. And on the way forward, he eases up the weight on the hands. He's he's sitting solidly on the seat. If this were your seat, sit more on the front edge of the seat. You don't should you shouldn't fall off and hang over the front edge. But you should load more the front edge of the seat, get the hip angle right, you know, tilt here in the lower spine, be prepared and have a wide and super soft grip here. And this is what you need. Storm forward, make sure your blade work is correct. Another product is your blade work fine. I mean, it's easy to practice these drills, get the blades off the water, land them like an airplane close to the catch. All right, how do you do in a race pace? Well, I was tired, you're not tired here. So why isn't the blade work perfect? That's the point. You don't wanna have any extra wave in terms of hello, every catch hello say hi with the blade you don't want to do that you want to go swiftly in the water and not too deep so it's absolute precision you need and everybody can do that no matter if you're a beginner or super pro um, chances you're gonna mess up this exercise are 101 percent if you haven't practiced this a lot and Alex is a pro he's in the national team uh, he's in the lightweight men's a quad of Austria right now and even he has a hard time to do it perfectly. See, all the way forward, all the way on the seat, and now loose hands, loose shoulders. There is so little time to get this right. Still, no extra splash. I hope this makes sense. So let me recap everything. No power during the drive. A solid connection at the finish. You shouldn't do this not quite having done the finish yet, storming forward. That's not the goal. Finish nicely, disconnect, release. This is why it's called release. And then whoop, accelerate on the way forward. You actually, you have to slide forward because the boat isn't going fast enough. So you have to move against the direction of travel. Although I'm not a big fan of that. You know, if, if you follow my videos, you know, I'm not a big fan of saying you slide forward in the boat. No, you pull the boat underneath yourself. But at this boat speed, isn't going to work. So you actually slide to the catch, you slide forward, you accelerate your body mass forward, and which means you have, to, you have to break your body mass again at the catch. And you have to do this in a very, very, very narrow time window. And this means everything you do has to be spot on and super precise. Go forward, speed breakdown. You barely see it, but you see the boat, no stopping. And if you, of course, if you row yourself, you can't really watch your bow. But what you can do is watch your stern. You see if the stern stops. Just have a look at your stern. Storm forward. Easy. Storm forward. Easy. No drive. It, this is one of the best exercises I know to get superb boat feeling. There is no better way to learn how to make the boat float and flow and glide through the water. In my opinion, and the older I get, the more I think rowing is more about not disturbing the boat, not so much about propelling it and pulling it and pushing it. That's all true, but we all know that story. But I think the most underrated issue is how much do you disturb the boat flow or not? And this exercise teaches you not to disturb the boat, not to destroy the work you've done to drive before but to keep the boat speed alive. Keeping the boat speed alive is the most important thing. And probably this is what I'm gonna call this video. Yeah, how to keep boat speed alive. There you go. All right, ladies and gents, I hope this was helpful. If you wanna get your video analysis, go to rmjaining.com. There's so many things we offer right now. There's the weekly live indoor rowing session. There's the weekly live indoor rowing training. Actually, a couple sessions per week across different time zones for you girls and guys in Australia, for you girls and guys in Europe and in the US. So we offer quite a lot to make sure every time zone is covered. All right, and then there's the personal training plan. This is one of the cornerstones of my work. I have athletes 
achieve their personal goal. I don't make a difference. I don't care if you're an Olympic athlete, if you're one of my Olympic candidates, if you are a world championship athlete, if you're a master's athlete, I don't care. What counts for me, are you dedicated or not? You want to reach a goal 2021 or not? If you want to join Team Arm Training, go to armtraining.com, fill out the program entry questionnaire, and let's get started. All right, ladies and gents, enough for today. Thanks for watching. If you feel this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up, share, like, subscribe to the channel. I really want to cross that 10K mark anytime soon now. And support my work on Patreon. It just shows me that the work I do has a good effect on the Roman community. All the best to you. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye.